Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using Santir's Spear, which brings a whole new meaning to the term hidden weapon in the Souls series. So, what exactly I mean by that is when you pick this thing up in the Doors of Pharaohs, it looks different, it has a different moveset, and it just in general is kind of different. So, when you, for when you first pick it up for the very first time, it has a rock on the end of it. The spear skewered a rock and it's just sticking there, and when you attack, you sort of bash the rock over people's heads. And you know, that's all well and good, but I, I think it's a bit better like this when you actually break the rock off. Now, for breaking the rock off, you need to break the weapon, and that means you need to go through 500 durability in order to get it into this state. So once you do that, you gain this incredibly diverse moveset, and it's very interesting to say the least. Uh, getting started with the weapon itself though, it requires 20 strength and 22 dexterity in order to wield it. It has no scaling bonus, so I highly recommend that you put it along the raw upgrade path. Now, its physical base normally is 200, when you put it to the raw path it's 230, and because this weapon has no scalings, by putting it on the raw path you just gain extra base damage at no cost to you whatsoever, so I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't put it on that path, I really don't. In addition to that, I'm wearing the Ring of Blades plus 2 with this thing, so I've got an attack rating of 280, so that's actually not bad at all. Um, counter Strength is 120 and Poise Damage is 35, and I actually forgot to take note of the weight of the weapon, sorry guys. I'll put that down in the description once the video is actually uploaded, because I, obviously, I said I don't have it on me at the moment, I don't know what it is. So, yeah. Now. This weapon, as you can see, its moveset is just ridiculous in so many ways. It's four different movesets in one. It's four different weapon class movesets in one. So getting started, uh, the one-handed R1 is a spear. The one-handed R2 is a halberd. The one-handed running attack is a falchion. And the one-handed rolling attack is a twin blade. Two-handed now, it's two-handed R1 is a twin blade. It's two-handed R2 is a twin blade followed by a halberd for the second R2. Um, the running attack is a halberd, and the rolling attack, I believe, also is a twin blade. It's really a bit hard to keep track of, I'm not gonna lie, because there's so much diversity to this weapon's moveset, it's just, it's ridiculous. And you know, that actually is the biggest pro of the weapon. You really need some practice with it to keep in mind what attacks you're doing, and when you're doing them, but, on the other hand, your opponents, they, they'll be completely just clueless. They won't know what's coming next. It's so hard to predict what your opponent is doing when they're fighting with this weapon, simply because of the four different movesets that are built into this thing. It's really just kind of ridiculous when you stop and think about it. This weapon has four movesets. Four! That's just insane. So, I mean, that can really, really throw people off, and that's really cool. I like that about it. Now, when I was saying the damage, some of you probably thought, you know, that's got a bit of a low damage output. And yeah, it does, but think of it like this. The Twin Blade has a low damage output. Yes, it's got a lower damage output than this. Uh, it's got just over 200 for me on a 40-40 quality build. This thing, no scaling, has a higher damage than the Twin Blade. So... You know, that's not really that bad. You gotta take it for what it is, and this thing is ridiculous with its moveset. The combos that it allows are fantastic and extremely varied, and there's just so much room for unique combos and everything. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, other pros of the weapon, I guess. I would have to say that the fact that it can't be broken, once you already break it, that's a huge pro. So, what I mean by that exactly is once you break this thing, break the rock off, go through that 500 durability, you never need to repair this weapon. This weapon can't be repaired. Once it's broken, it is broken, uh, and it just it doesn't need to be repaired ever. So that's definitely a good thing about it. So if you're going through a long area with a lot of enemies, then you should definitely pick up this thing and use it for that area, simply for the fact that it won't break. It can't break because it's technically broken and the blacksmiths won't repair it for you. So, I mean, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, cons of the weapon, 
I would have to say that the cons would probably be the biggest con would definitely be the fact that it has 500 durability and you need to go through all of that before you can unlock the diverse moveset. But really other than that, I can't think of a con for this thing, so that's really all I've got left to say. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, this is the last fight, and I will see you guys next time.